to my beloved sister. May you have many children past the one that you now bear. And may your husband remain strong and wise and the two of you rule Cumbria together for many years to come. Hello and welcome connoisseurs of Crusader Kings 3, both friends and newcomers alike. My name is Huntiner and we are here once again in Strathern, the Isles, with High Chieftain Findbar with the Tress. We are returning from a tournament where we fought in a duel down in Ireland. And interestingly enough, all of our children came. There is Caitlin. There is Katan. Katane, actually. Katane, I think is what her name is, how you pronounce it. There is Gormule. There is Gus. There is Navala. And of course, Gormla. Gormla. Gormiel. Everyone's here. Except, of course, Fear. Fear is uh, at home running things while we're out. Let's just get started. We're going to have to decide what, we're, what our next plan is. We probably should do some raiding, but the only realistic place for us to raid at this point is Ireland. We could raid inside the lands of the High King. We don't really... We don't, we don't really think that the High King's uh, rule is legitimate. Because we think it should be the Neils. Family bias and all. This whole area is a mess. We have sort of a no-man's land of random rulers between the southern coast here of Alba and the north. But that's not really our thing to deal with. We've done so much already. And it is a little bit... It is about time that we take a break. Our king is, of course, off helping an ally with a war, and Osiric has just finished his control task. Let's see if there's someplace else for him to help out. We probably should do the Inner Hebrides, because that is our own territory, and we should do our territory first. We have Argyle here. We aren't going to change Argyle ourselves, but if our king decides to do it, that's up to him. We have nothing against the Insularists. We are changing the place that we intend to be our capital eventually. But, uh, Inslay is going to have to be prepared for that. Because if we're going to ever feudalize, we need to get this to... 5, I think, development. And that's going to take some time. Once we have spread our culture to the necessary places... Right now we're working on Linlithglusher. We will maybe start to shift things. We do want to sort of get rid of the Norse up there. Oh, that's a long-term goal, though. My spymaster has come to me with a discovery. She is certain my champion, Warbrandir, is... I worked so hard to get you to join. And now you're doing this? Throw him in jail. Why would you try to murder my daughter? She's just a kid. After everything we did for you. You know, we tried to make you a good Christian and make you understand. We should have known with your character it would never be possible. So, we don't want to execute him, because that's just too much. We could banish him forever. Take his money. Make him go. He's one of our best warriors, but we can't keep somebody around who's legitimately trying to murder our daughter. Like, that's... Absurd. So, I mean, he might not be trying to murder her. He is plotting against her. There are other plots than murder that exist. Nope, it's a murder. Now, it's not his murder scheme, I don't think. Maybe it is his murder scheme. So let's banish him. The beautiful game. A trip out to one of the villages in your holding has led me into an intriguing situation. What appears to be the vast majority of the village has turned out into the market square and two motley groups of people have formed. Equidistant to both of them, visible from my position by only virtue of the rather apprehensive looking villager holding it 
appears to be an inflated pig's bladder. Perhaps, noticing my quizzical expression, a valet quickly explains the situation. It turns out to be some form of popular game. How fascinating. What are the rules? I'm going to investigate. It is with some anxiety that my trusty valet informs me of the rules and regulations of the coming event. It, as it happens, the game is of so-called football. And it is very widely played and encompasses all manners of people. Supposedly both sides endeavor to move the ball, as the pig bladder is known, to the side of the village that their group is not defending by any means necessary. That final part was intoned with significant gravitas, and the explanation was swift. Whilst death is rare, injury is not. You think there's a spot for me? Fetch my boots. We're doing it. <laughs> We're playing. As I stand amongst the townspeople, I spy one middle-aged man adjusting some leather straps beneath his tunic. Now that I notice, in fact, his entire midriff looks entirely too bulky for someone of his relatively scraggy stature. His chest and stomach straining somewhat against the confines of his clothes. Notice my interest, he grins and beckons me closer and lifts the fabric. Beneath the tunic, wrapped around his body, are layers of crude wooden slats and an approximation of armor. I call it under armor, he says, with an accompanying wink. What a ridiculous premise. Yeah. <laughs> Farewell. Do not return. Can't believe that you joined a plot to murder my literal child. With all the pregame niceties taken care of, all that remains is to initiate the event. The town crier leaning dangerously out of the first floor window of a house overlooking the square bundles the pig's bladder through the flame. The frame. The crowd look up expectantly, and after a short pause, the ball takes flight. The stampede begins. Follow me, team! The pig's bladder is loose. A nervous pair of hands fumble it, and it bounces once before being grabbed by a member of the clergy. He grins and stumbles forward. The crowd parting uncertainly before him. Nobody is quite sure what to make of this holy person playing such a violent game, and more or more seemingly getting away with it. I step forward dubiously. Punch him right in the face step aside and let somebody else deal with them. Yeah! <laughs> Fighting the opposition during these games is extremely common, but it's with some confusion that I can see what appears to be two of my teammates fighting each other. You recognize each. One is a local boyer and the other a dyer of textiles. The two are locked in ferocious combat, so much so that their teammates have begun to notice. This petty dispute is beginning to tie up a significant portion of my team, and the mass of people begins to grind towards the side of the village we're defending. All right, break it up. Break it up. You successfully separate the brawlers. Beautiful game. The final score. As the day wears on, the ebb and flow of the game reaches its climax. Both sides surge forward after the ball, and I'm caught in the middle of one such ebby and flow of people. I topple and fall, protecting my head from the stamping, stamping feet, only to clamber to my knees and find an unusual calm befalling the market square. It looks like the game is done. <sighs> Trampling feet thunder past, and I struggle to my feet. To ascertain why, a short distance away in the square, the opposition team hold the ball aloft triumphantly and cheer. It's not just a loss, it's an outright demolition. The team begins to drift despondently out of the area, but the party is only just starting for the victors. A large cask of ale has already taken center stage and the drinks are flowing freely for celebrations that will not last, no doubt last into the evening. Congratulations to the winners. Yeah. Well, that was fun. I have long heard good things about you. I am interested in starting a conversation. Who the hell are you? Where do you live? So you are down there. You are a vassal of the Irish king. Politely declined. We do not communicate with the Norse. Diplomacy perk. Oh, somebody is attacking. Actually, no, he is trying to take something. What are you trying to what are you trying to achieve here? What are you trying to achieve here? Son-in-law? Trying to take this. 
right? Yeah. Hmm. Well, our honor demands that we participate, so we will. Let's look at our new diplomacy perk. We can take Heart of the Family, or we can take Confidence. I think Confidence is more useful immediately. There are a man who likes our friends. And let's just prepare for this war. We will raise all here. Hmm. This is my son. We could have Osiric do it. Or we could do it ourselves. No, I think this is our the first opportunity for our son to really go and try his medal as a commander. So we will leave our son in charge. And that's fine. Whoops, that's not right. <laughs> we removed him. We didn't we didn't click off. And we'll try to help out. Let's see who's involved. This guy, so we can kill this army to help out. We're going to do some cleanup work down here, starting with this. This is going to not help him in his war that he's already trying to do. That's a, that's a known thing. Not a great situation to get yourself into. They're going to join up, and we are going to try to just do something about that. This is all someone we want to attack get down in here he's gonna to try to uh, siege they don't know what they're doing hopefully we can catch them soon probably not here but maybe after yeah so they are trying to use the defense of their keep to uh, stop this uh, counterattack faction created against us it's a peasant rabble up in the north Katain has come of age. Oh, good job. So our wife has done an excellent job training our daughter. She's going to make an excellent wife to our distant relative in uh, in Ireland. Let's go check out the state of our friend Alfred's domain. England has formed. I think we talked about that in the last episode, but I just wanted to, to point it out. Most of his children have died. I think his wife and his daughter were both disfigured by measles. And his other children died of the smallpox. Oof. He has one living son. The one that's marrying our daughter. So it looks like... She is going to be Queen of England. Four mil. Wow, that's a... That's a pretty big change in our original thought about that. Or, what? No, that's not true. We always... It was always his heir, right? Because the first kid was already dead, right? Yeah, that, that was always our intent, was that she would become Queen of England. But it is cool. You know, our family is definitely raising their position up. I think she married him when he was still just a duke, though. There we go. Good battle. Let's see if we can't um, finish this quick. We'll stay here for the siege for now, I think. I'm trying to sort of see if this guy's going to even bother to land. They're so weak now. I don't think they even stand a chance. New hobby. My best friend, King Alfred, approaches me with a big smile on his face. My dearest friend, we finally see each other. I feel like we never spent any quality time together lately. Maybe you'd be willing to try something new with me. I know just the thing to distract your mind. Physical activity is always the answer. Sweat out your pain. Make your muscles scream so loud you can't hear your own thoughts. Bleed out your anger. Meet me in the courtyard. I'll show you how. Of course. Of course, I'll give it a try for you. Um, somebody's grieving pretty ineffectively. Whoa. It's a terrible tragedy when a plague kills basically your entire family. That's, uh, it's not good. I don't think I'd be doing well either. We'll just, uh, fight this here. He is involved, right? That is a, I can't even see because it, it's the bug thing happened. Oh. They are sieging the Inner Hebrides, which we're going to have to do something about after this battle. Right, yep, our next destination. This battle is going to be quick, though. Let's get over there. And 
Do we have anyone that we can... Oh, too few champions. We're going to have to do both. Oh, we can ask our head of faith for gold. That will help us get champions. So we're going to do that. We can't invite champions because we've done it too recently. You can designate a guardian for your son, Fergus. He's seven. He wants to be a diplomat. He's curious. I think a diplomat is good. Let's find him a educator. Our wife would just... I mean, if we change him to... Ooh, that's interesting. Maybe we change him to learning? I think so, because then our wife can handle it. And then she'll do an excellent job for him. So let's make him learn it. There we go. I will use this wealth wisely? Of course I will. I need it. <laughs> for all of my plans. Let me see. We can ask our head of faith for things. We don't want any of this stuff. Italy. Ooh. Actually, no. <laughs> no, that's, that's above our station. We don't want that. We don't want that at all. Although, returning to Ulster might be interesting. But I don't think so. We said, we said we were taking a break, so we're taking a break. But we've done so much already. Let's see who is in our prison. This guy, this guy is a Welsh Catholic. I think we recruit him because we can use the extra warrior and he's above the seven minimum. But we have done what we wanted to do, stop the siege. We will chase him around a bit. A courtship between friends, so Alfred is sending us this person. Okay, he's a 61-year-old. He is a wise man. He's learned. He's very learned. I think we take him, even though I'm not sure what we'll do with him. He's, he's actually not a bad warrior for a 61-year-old. That's interesting. Um... Do we have any positions we need? Our court tutor is literally terrible. When did that happen? Oh, he's infirm now. That's probably why. Huh. Yeah. I mean, the new guy is good. This 33-year-old is good. I'd rather have her do it, because she'll be around for longer. So let's switch up the tutor with someone who's more capable of doing the job. Poor old guy is just no longer the man he once was. Sorry, Melguin, but uh, we gotta we gotta put somebody more capable in charge of helping our children get their educations. I don't think we're gonna ever catch this, but we'll try anyway. Oh, it's gonna let us catch him. It's interesting enough. Feel a, bit, a little bit off about this, but I think the armies of our enemy are basically destroyed, right? Yeah, there's nothing. I'm not, I'm sure they can't break it. If they brought everything they have together, they couldn't break that siege. So, so that's good. Task finished. Promote culture is done. Let's put you back on that. And we want to promote cultures. Where, where, where? This is all culturally ours already? Maybe we don't. I mean, we do want to start developing the capital, right? I think we're going to start developing our new capital. We're feeling a little bit less um, focused on destroying the Norse. It's more their religion we're going to... Uh, we are going bald. We are going bald. Yep. What can a man do when he loses his beautiful hair? Not much. That's fine, you know. Can't change your genetics about that.
I mean, some of the greatest men men in history were bald, right? Caesar, for one, at least in some depictions. As per usual, we're going to have to chase these armies all across the map. Well, maybe we should bring our armies back together soon. That'd probably be safer. I don't know why you're you're even thinking about that. Like, I don't even know why you have that in your mind. We're uh, going to come into here. Nobody other than us is sieging this. We're about to siege his capital through, which is good. Our son is leading the combat army, right? Yeah, ooh, he got wounded. It's all right. It's not unusual to get wounded in battle. It's part of how things go. Hopefully he's hired a decent doctor to, uh, to make that work out for him. We are going to demand his conversion and then he can go. I think once we finish these two sieges, it'll be over. So let's uh, let's start looking at the other things. Oh, war declared on liege. What kind of war was declared on our liege? Oh, it's nothing. It's a peasant uprising. That's fine. This army will help our liege out because we know our liege's army is off. So we got this for him. We got this for you, my friend. We got this. Once this siege is done, we will uh, we'll send ourselves up and put an end to that war for you. Should be done soon, right? Right? <laughs> well, this one might actually be done first. Which would be wild, but also makes sense since this army's not really that great a sieging army. Let's get up here and do this thing. Victory. So we have won our war for our Irish brethren. No, we don't want to disband our army because we are using it to win our king's rebellion for him. Now, just to get the king a little indebted to our son, we're going to put him in charge of the army that breaks these rebels. And my son is going to lead an army to put down the king's problem for him. You can thank me later, my friend. Betrothed can marry. Excellent. Sadly, Cumbria has basically collapsed since we made that betrothal. Liege has, of course, won the war that we won for him, so he doesn't have to remove his troops from helping his ally. That feels like proper, appropriate service. Poor son is still wounded. And he's superstitious, apparently. And he had a failed treatment. None of that's any good. It's an aggravated wound. Ugh. Not great. He is still feeling fine, though, so he's likely going to be fine. He has had his first son, Fergus McFergus, <laughs> and his wife is pregnant again. Lovely. Okay, that's fine. Now, we have some money in the pot, which we wanted. Let's see, what should we do with that money? I mean, maybe develop our territory, right? We have everything we need here. Could increase our tribal holding. Could help. We could also look to improving some of the other places we control. Hmm. What kind of... We have... Light Horsemen and Bowmen. And none of the buildings we have available to us help Light Horsemen. We don't need more mar... We don't need more uh, knights right now. We already have more than we, we currently have available to us. 
We could put in warrior lodges. But I think we'll put in markets. I think markets is a good choice. Then we'll go over here. You've already finished that. Let's actually check how much we need to feudalize. Adopt feudal ways. So we need our authority to go up, of course. The development level in... Yeah, it's going to be five. Then we need 70% of the innovation. So let's check on that. Beliefs. Nope, that's... We'll, we keep doing that. We keep clicking the wrong one. It's, it's just a thing that happens. We don't... So there are... 20 some of these. We have one, two, three, four, five, six of six, ten, fourteen. So we have six of fourteen. That's less than half. Okay. Invitation to my son's hunt. We will absolutely go to our son's hunt. We probably don't need any of this because he's literally next door. Let's join his hunt. Good. And yeah, I mean, let's we can develop the north too. I mean, we have two sons. We want to develop the territory of our other son as well, right? Soon. Oh, it's falconry. That's great. Let's get out there. Let's put a pause on this. Our poor balding self. Okay. Here. We can always build more gathering halls, I think. And that will be enough for now. Let's hunt. Let us hunt. Mormair Fear of Linlith Glusher has been admiring my bird since we first parted for a hunt, and I can hardly blame him. Such a magnificent and beautiful beast it is. We near a small river, rich and busy with fish of generous size. I feel this is the perfect opportunity to show what my hawk can do. My falconry skill will impress. We're not really that good at this. <laughs> I'll grab a fish myself. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm grabbing the fish myself. I grab a fish with my bare hands, yeah. Yeah, that's more like me, I think. Bird. Excellent bird, but no. It's time. Uh, we barely, we barely have any chance to succeed at this. It's all right, though. You know, we're just visiting our son. That's all this is about. Oh, well, like I've said many times before, it's good to get out and have exercise. That's just as important as actually succeeding. So we've got our county control task finished there. I think we do the Outer Hebrides next. Good. And we leave empty-handed. It's fine, though. Let's leave this adventure behind. Good exercise, a good time with my son. That's all it really takes. We caught a fish with our bare hands. That can be added to the list of things, amazing things that we've done. We don't want to declare any of these wars. That's all fine. She increased her learning by two. That's cool. From groomed to rule, of course. What are these? This is a grand tour, and this is a grand tournament. We don't need to do any of that. Not right now. We're developing our territory right now, so we don't need to spend that money. What is this? He's having a feast. Kid. You're... You're doing the work. I mean, I guess you're feeling better because your your wound is gone. That's, that's a good enough reason to celebrate, right? Absolutely, we go to our son's feast. Which means we cannot afford to upgrade this quite yet. We will as soon as we can, though. A couple of months. Maybe even just one month away. Probably we'll put markets there. Maybe we'll build a... Uh, maybe we'll build a harbor. I can't wait. Yes, yes, I cannot wait. My servants run across the hall, bringing the final decorations, and some guests are yet to a lot arrive. Not my servants, the servants. And I indulge myself with a delicious drink by the fire. There's no place I'd rather be. Exactly. What a good time. Oh, uh, her... Her sister is coming home. 
Apparently the guests are dancing. That's cute. That's his wife. It's his caravan master. Nice! Uh, that's cute. I've never seen that before. Another plague is near our territory. Another sickness. Feast a warm welcome. I look forward to this. Oh, typhus is spreading. Ethel Siege has got typhus. That's not good. I mean, our wife is handling it, and she is good at her job, so hopefully it doesn't last too long. Of course, we've moved to the, to the place where it's happening, which is not that great. Ah, uh, is there any more jovial, anything more jovial than a good feast? Guests throng to and fro, eating and chatting while flickering torchlight plays off the wall, bouncing like laughter around the hall. So this is... I think we're not going to take the stress down, of course. I think we're going to instead take the... Everyone we have a trade in common with, make everybody like us better. Who is this? This is my wet nurse. She has a child of her own who is sick. That will improve her quality as a wet nurse. Can't remember if she was brought here for that reason, but it's all right. Her former spouse was, oh. Flanan. All right. She recognizes true intellect. Well, I mean, I did hire her, so. Anglo-Saxon sweat spreads. Snow in Edinburgh. It's in Edinburgh. In Falkirk. It's not great. It's not great. Everybody seems to be really enjoying our presence at this feat. We're not entering seclusion. We're, we're not. We're not fleeing the sickness. As one plate of flute is replaced by the next, my acquaintance Gunhilda goes on and on about ancient military campaigns. No, no, please do go on. We could talk more about her, but I think no. We're gonna we're gonna listen to her conversation about the thing we're interested in. Petty Queen Caitlin. So, we are basically celebrating my daughter's marriage. Here, here. Here, here. That's nice of him to, to, to celebrate his, his sister's marriage. Daylight pours through the windows, and in just one moment the hall becomes illuminated. Most of the seats are now empty. Some servants hand me my weapon and take their leave with a cheery bow. And now I shall depart and go home. Nice. Finish the feast. Okay. Hopefully my wife can handle this illness. Really, hopefully she can. Can't believe we went on a feast right into the territory of the plague. Investment inquiry. With High Chieftainess Gormla's diligent administration of my household finances, there is more gold at the end of this season than expected. How should we put it to best use? Magnificent party, invest money in the local area. Let's do that. Kind of wish I'd already moved. We're not doing any of those. We already checked that. We've got this up to two now. Oh, Caitlin's got pneumonia. That's not Caitlin. Get that Catan. Catan. He's got pneumonia. Caitlin died of typhus while pregnant on the way home. Oh, poor girl. And her sister is sick. What a horrid thing to happen. I think we're going to have to hold a funeral for her, aren't we? Like an honest funeral. We're going to go here to this church. Our granddaughter also died. Of typhus. 
and his wife is sick. Also of typhus. And his son is sick with typhus. They are not handling this at all. This is extremely tragic. And he's got worsened disease symptoms. He's going to die too. What a horrible thing to happen. I think we're going to have to do a funeral for our daughter. But I think we're also going to have to include our granddaughter in this funeral. Let's start. So we're going to... We're going to the church here in Colander. Colander is to be Caitlin's final resting place, and I am left alone to gather my thoughts and prepare for the arrival of the honored mourners. I'll never forget her. <sighs> what? A sad, tragic event. Judith comes of age. She did well in her education as well. Good job, Judith. Really hope you get up past this pneumonia because I can't lose more family. Our grandson also died. Because of the typhus. She's the only one who the doctor was successful with. So she may live. It's a catastrophic health penalty to get typhus. What a tragedy. That feast. That feast is literally just a moment of such terrible destruction. All because of that feast. Because she wouldn't have died if she wasn't, uh, if he didn't hold a feast on her. That's, uh, that's wild. Oh, I don't know what we can do. Um, there's very little we can do. I hope his stress level isn't, that isn't like destroying him. What a hard life he's had so far. I and the other mourners take a reprieve from our grief to enjoy the bounty of food. Gerok, usually the lifeblood of any feast, now sits across me misty-eyed with an untouched goblet at her side. How can we make ourselves fat and merry in times like these? Are we to satisfy our hedonistic desires? Well, Caitlin has none. Join me. Empty your goblets in libation. The guests seem to agree. There's wisdom in Jarok's oafish lamentation. I think we're going to join the offering. All eyes fall upon High Chief Disgormlaw of the Isles. As she falls to the ground in lamentation, hands coating her reddened eyes from view, High Chief Disgormlaw of the Isles' sorrowful grasps and chokes have left her fellow mourners breathless and many offer her comfort and reverence, as if it were her who is to be committed to the hereafter. She must be grieving because she knows that if she had been the doctor, all of these typhus deaths probably would have been saved. I mean, she's just dedicated her life to saving the lives of people who are sick and to have so many members of her family die and become sick. At least, at least his wife recovered. Well, maybe they still have another chance. This is the tragedy of the Middle Ages, after all. Eyes must find only upon me. That doesn't make any sense. I can mourn in my own way. I offer comfort. Of course I do. I'll tell her that it wasn't put in her hands by God to, to do this thing. You know, God works in mysterious ways. Of all the figures venerated and villainous, none have been 
desired more than our departed petty queen, Caitlin of Strathclyde, with her crowd of weepers and gawkers finding other subjects to satisfy their fascination, I am left, last left with a moment of solace between myself and my daughter. A time for a quick prayer? Allow myself a moment of grief. Yeah, I think so. I could promise to be a better high chieftain. But no. I have done an excellent job. This isn't my fault. So I will allow myself a moment of grief. Getting personal. In our latest correspondence, my friend Earl Osric made a mention in passing of the state of his troops. I did not know he was also interested in the subject. Uh, I'll, you know, it's, we have to get back into life, right? So I'll return his ladder. Before me, a feasting table is stocked high with all manner of food and drink as petty queen Caitlin of Strathclyde were trying to offer a final act of magn magnanimity before passing. Mormair Fingen of Inverness has so far refused to lay her finger on this banquet. Smelling his goblet around in idle solace, his middle distant stares fall wearily upon me with a quiet nod. He raises his drink high to Petty Queen Caitlin of Strathclyde, truly one of the greats. Speak a quiet prayer? No. We'll we'll do the toast. Now, I never really knew this man very well, but after that, I think we need to treat him with more respect. Ugh. Thank thank God. Ketan has uh, has recovered and has now returned to her husband in Ireland. And their children are safe as well. Thankfully, she didn't bring the typhus with her. It's still strong. But her wife is doing her service, her, her duty. 22 years as a doctor. And to see her children die in the hands of other doctors, for her child and her grandchildren. What a horrid thing. The mourners move through the hall, weeping in a kind of macabre dance. All for Petty Queen Ketlin of Strathclyde. The unsettling silence of people holding back when they so desperately wish to do. Silent screams never part their lips. Hard fought battles against tears being lost, so ashamed of their own grief. I rise to my feet and allow myself to get lost in the dance with my fellow mourners. I must remain strong. Forty-one more days and the funeral is over. What a dark time. The shadows of mourners no longer loom over me, and I'm at last given a moment alone. What a quiet comfort. What quiet comfort I could take in such a moment, without the rattling and prattling of other guests in my ears. Just me and my thoughts of Petty Queen, Kathleen of Strathclyde. It feels good. I'm going to take heart of the family. I think that's an appropriate... Uh, Lifestyle trait to pick up right now. The body of my lost daughter has now been void of life for days, yet her eyes still hold life therein. The gaze of the divine. God's hold on the body from the ravages of rotten decay, as if keeping her in a dream between living and dead. The clamoring crowd have declared this body incorruptible, chosen to be ascended to be a saint. I don't think I'm going to argue against this. I don't think I would succeed anyway. So, I'm just going to accept it. Oh no. Fear, you now. After all this, you too. He has the health to get through it, though, and whatever doctor it is that serves them has also helped him to recover, so his health is poor. He could die, but it is unlikely. The sorrowful line marches on the line to have a last moment with Petty Queen Ketlin of Strathclyde, a last whisper 
a long, long goodbye, a last nothing at the last place anyone will see her again. Truly a privilege it is to be here. The line brings me closer until at last the figure in front of me parts and there is nothing but a veil between me and her. Quiet bow and I part. I promise to rule in her honor. All of these are stressing me out. I think we're just going to do the pow pro the uh, the quiet bow and part. We don't want to make this about us. This is not about us. <sighs> wow. Now the time has come to commit Petty Queen Caitlin of Strathclyde's final rites before her final journey to the hereafter. Caitlin's enshrined body is held suspended above an open grave, surrounded by close friends and family. Stood at her head is you, a privileged place of mourning afforded only to the magnanimous host. I look upon the lifeless body of my daughter and lament. No father should ever live to see his own children be cruelly snuffed out. At last her body is lowered into the earth and the funeral is officially completed with a prayer. Time to finally return home. My poor son. Will the typhus spread to us? There's still a chance 48 people have died from this, including three of my own family. Seems to be traveling south more than north. We did bring it back with us, but I don't see any sign that it's spreading past the people we brought. Back. How many courtiers do we have that have typhus? None, maybe now? Doesn't look like it. No, the one guy who got it seems to have uh, recovered. Probably from the excellent work of my wife. And with that sadness, we're going to end this episode because it has been a little bit long since we could finish the funeral. I hope you join me the next time we are here with the now mourning High Chieftain Findbar of the Isles. Goodbye for now.